Bueno, pues si os parece empezamos. Eh, buenas tardes a todas y, y a todos. Eh, soy Paz García, eh, profesora de la Facultad de Física de la Universidad de Valencia y tengo el honor de presidir el grupo especializado de mujeres en física de la, de la RSEF. Eh, ya sabéis que para celebrar el 11 de febrero y el 8 de marzo hemos eh, organizado una serie de webinars, eh, uno cada mes. Entonces hoy tenemos a, a Francesca Vidotto eh, que nos dará la charla eh, que estáis viendo. Eh, voy a presentarla en, en inglés. Now I will switch to, to English, Francesca. Yeah, so good morning for you because you are in, in, in Canada. Uh, thank you very, very much. For, for joining us. For us, it's uh, really a, a, an honor that you have uh, here. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will just explain everybody uh, some of the, your uh, biographies. So uh, Francesca is a theoretical physicist. Uh, she working in loop gra quantum gravity, and she has contributed to its, its application to cosmology and to black holes. She studies master degree at Universidad de Gli di Padova and PhD at Universidad de Gli in Pavia in Italy. She is Italian. She visits as a postdoc uh, in Spain at the Univers Univers Universidad del País Vasco, at the Theoretical Physics Department, and at Netherlands at Rambaud University, Nijmegen. Also in, in Grenoble, in the Laboratoire de Physique Subatomic et Cosmology. Since a couple of years, she is assistant professor at the Department of Applied Mathematics and Department of Philosophy at the University of Western in Ontario, where she holds a Canada Research Chair in the Foundation of Physics. Her profile is really interesting since she has a double appointment in physics and philosophy, and she's also core member of the Rodman Institute for Philosophy of Science. This year, she has been teaching a new course on women in science. In addition, she has been an activist for human rights, and in particular, for women rights since young age, collaborating with the Italian Associazione Donne e Scienza when she just was a student. So thank you very much. I, I, I know that you like that we make, maybe can be open dialogue, but uh, I wanted to, to tell to the attendees that if they want to ask something at the end or we will see how it's going, then they ask at the at chat, escribís en el chat, vale? And then we will, at the end, I will, uh, we will ask and we will discuss. So, Welcome to our webinar and thank you very much for being here. Thank, thank you, Paz. It's, it's my pleasure to, to speak to this audience. Uh, it's an honor for me and so I'm very happy. I had a wonderful time uh, when I was in Bilbao and in general, I enjoy my collaborations with uh, my colleagues in uh, Madrid and, and Bilbao. So it's really a pleasure to be with this audience. And it's a pleasure to be able to talk uh, about something uh, that is really close to my heart. Uh, I ask, sorry, uh, me gusta muchísimo hablar en castellano, ma como que no lo hablo muy bien, uh, no es bueno por una charla. Uh, entonces voy a hablar en inglés. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, okay. as you can see, the title of my talk is uh, Can Physics Be Feminist? And uh, in order to speak about this uh, during uh, this talk, uh, I wanted to discuss what it means to do uh, feminist science. And then uh, see, we have examples of uh, um, how science can be done as a feminist, but uh, I would like to discuss with you what is specific in physics and what prevents uh, uh, physics to uh, be done as a, as a feminist. Um, I wanted to start uh, uh, quoting this uh, uh, sentence by Amy Bag, uh, in which she, she says, uh, to the uninitiated, uh, demographics is the only issue relevant to women in physics. This does not imply, however, that this concern is foolish or, or misplaced. 
may be that uh, a critical mass uh, must be achieved before uh, feminism within the field of physics can mature and proceed uh, as in other fields. So uh, very often uh, the discussion uh, is uh, centered uh, um, about uh, rising the numbers uh, and, uh, and keeping uh, women to work uh, in our field in physics. And of course, uh, um, by doing this, uh, uh, we learn a lot uh, about uh, how physics work. But uh, once uh, we achieve this goal, uh, we may be free to ask more questions about uh, which kind of physics we want to do and whether uh, uh, the entrance of more women and in general uh, um, more people that traditionally were kept out uh, from science and from physics may change uh, the face of physics itself. So um, Amy Bag continues in, uh, in her paper saying arguments for including women tend to be based on equity concerns or the concern that people with good minds should not be turned away when they might be utilized in the service of physics as is. Arguments tend not, for example, to be based on feminist empiricist claim that only diversely gender group can produce unbiased result or that problems chosen and methods used must be divested of uh, an existing Western uh, or androcentric, androcentric uh, bias. And here, uh, Amy Bag is uh, uh, basically paraphrasing uh, what Sandra Hardin, an important uh, philosopher of science, um, in, uh, in particular in the field of feminist empiricism, said uh, in the 80s, so that was a time of uh, uh, in, of renaissance, of, uh, of development uh, of the field of feminist uh, epistemology. So let's see what uh, it said here. Uh, we can tackle the problem of uh, women in physics, uh, talking about equity. This is certainly something very important to be done. But in a certain sense, uh, talking about uh, equity um, has uh, uh, a lot of uh, shared features uh, with um, all the other works uh, in which uh, women have been uh, uh, kept out. Uh, so all um, the kind of jobs that uh, in somewhere, uh, in, in uh, some sense, uh, were associated with wealth, with power, with prestige, were all um, uh, kind of jobs from which uh, uh, women were um, put uh, aside. And so physics, uh, uh, working as a researcher in physics, uh, somehow is just part of this uh, uh, big class of uh, jobs. <laughs> so, so we can share um, uh, the experience uh, and we can learn uh, from what has been done uh, in other fields to include more uh, uh, more women certainly also when we talk about equity and the strategies to retain more women then we uh, go to the core of uh, what uh, um, physics is uh, what are uh, um, the characteristics uh, uh, and the way we feel the, the practitioner think about physics itself. And, uh, but then the other question is about uh, quality. So one of the stance of uh, feminist, of the feminist reflection on science is not just about uh, having more women in science, but it's about also changing science. So you can think there are, uh, of course, a different point of view here. There are some um, feminist thinkers that say uh, that um, uh, science has grown uh, in such a wicked uh, uh, way, being uh, uh, standing on the ground of uh, a um, uh, patriarchal, if you want, also capitalistic uh, uh, society, uh, a, a racist society. So 
we have to throw away all science or all physics. But there are also a big bunch of uh, um, uh, feminist thinkers and uh, feminist philosophers of science that have been arguing for uh, the fact that uh, we can improve the science uh, uh, that we are doing, we can do science better uh, if uh, there is more diversity. And this is what I wanted to talk about uh, uh, in this talk. And I want to talk about uh, how this can be, or has already been done somehow in physics. Uh, something that I want to stress uh, is that uh, <laughs> being a woman is not enough to be a feminist. Uh, the, again, another discussion among uh, feminist scholars uh, has been about whether there was a distinctive uh, female way of knowing. And this uh, has been certainly a very interesting uh, uh, field uh, in which a lot of thoughts have been developed. But uh, another possibility that is probably more interesting for us uh, as physicists uh, is uh, uh, that uh, doing uh, uh, feminist science means uh, do science as a feminist. And this is uh, the point that I want to develop. I mean, if you, if you think about um, uh, other uh, fields of uh, other aspects of our life uh, um, in this kind of tradition uh, it's like saying uh, okay it's not enough uh, that you are a worker to have awareness uh, of your condition and uh, the power structure uh, that uh, display when you work uh, for somebody else and in the same way, or if you have yeah, a person of color, you are not automatically anti-racist. In order to be anti-racist, you should get an awareness of your history, of your position in society. And in the same way, um, to be a feminist uh, is not enough to be a woman. You have to develop an, an awareness of what does it mean to be a woman in, in in, uh, in this society, what does it mean uh, uh, to be a woman in physics? And by the way, this is uh, also a very interesting uh, point of view because you don't have to be a woman to be a feminist. You can be whatever else. And um, uh, doing science as a feminist is not just about uh, uh, working for uh, uh, women in physics, uh, women in science, but it's really about um, uh, rising uh, uh, diversity and making uh, uh, science more inclusive and more democratic and so on. I will present you later a list of aspects that would make that is what the scholars have defined a feminist uh, uh, science. And uh, but I'm, I'm anticipating this because uh, for me, uh, doing science as feminist is uh, uh, somehow uh, the standing ground from which then I can try to do also science as a anti-racist, as an anti-fascist, and uh, um, so. And uh, I can improve uh, science uh, opening it uh, uh, to all the people that traditionally uh, been excluded from science. So this is, but you know, women are uh, in principle they should be uh, fifty one percent of the people in the world. So if uh, we cannot achieve uh, to make them uh, participating in science and contributing intellectually to the construction of science, well. Uh, if we don't do this, it will be harder also for uh, all the other people that are discriminated to make uh, this uh, step. So um, I said uh, I don't want to talk uh, about uh, uh, just numbers, uh, but uh, it's always a good starting point uh, for the discussion. So here I have a map. Uh, uh, it's not about physics. It's in general about uh, uh, the number of women uh, doing uh, research, uh, being a professional researcher in different countries. And uh, I like to show this uh, every time I start a discussion because uh, it uh, hurts our prejudice about uh, uh, the connection between doing science and being a woman. As you say, as you can see in this map, uh, so the, the places that are darker 
are those that have a larger share of women in science. So for instance, well, I can give you some data also for United States and Canada. Um, in this, uh, um, in this uh, um, map, uh, so um, for instance, uh, Spain is something around 40%. That is not so bad, but uh, um, but there are other countries that uh, do better. <laughs> so, like uh, look, look here, this very dark spot where seventy nine percent of women uh, are. Uh, the researchers in that country, or look at Mongolia, look at uh, all these other places, places like also Brazil and so on. So uh, I show this uh, uh, to highlight uh, that uh, we are tackling a multidimensional problem. Uh, people are surprised that in places uh, also look here like Egypt or Algeria. So places in uh, uh, which uh, you may think that uh, women are not uh, as emancipated as in other countries, like for instance, my experience in the Netherlands. Well, this doesn't match with uh, the presence of uh, women in, in research there. So my, my naive answer, if you want, is that uh, on one hand, uh, there is, of course, uh, the issue of the emancipation uh, of women and women rights uh, in a particular country. But this is also entangled with uh, how science is uh, considered in that particular country. Um, in places in which uh, uh, science uh, ha is uh, uh, held to higher respect and uh, implies uh, also a um, uh, higher status in society, so higher salary, more power, uh, power in sense, uh, as I said, of uh, respect uh, uh, from uh, society. Well, in those places, uh, doesn't matter what you think about uh, um, uh, how women, uh, how much women are emancipated, uh, well, in those places, uh, women uh, have uh, uh, more difficulties uh, to access uh, um, professional positions in science. So uh, the hint here is that uh, there is a, a struggle uh, of power when we talk about uh, uh, science and physics uh, as a profession, uh, it's also always a matter of um, power, uh, the power structure in, in society and uh, how much uh, um, uh, um, women can, can share it. And uh, something also that I wanted to, uh, to comment with you about this is that different countries uh, uh, display different stereoty stereotypes of, about what it means uh, uh, to do science and what it's appropriate for women. I remember talking with uh, colleagues uh, uh, from the Middle East, in, from places like uh, Iran, that were telling me, uh, that uh, they went into theoretical physics, uh, uh, my field of research, because theoretical physics is more mathematical, is more abstract, so it's considered more appropriate for women. Uh, the idea is that uh, if you are a man, you would do engineering, something more muscular, or uh, you would go in the lab and build stuff. So this is a, a male thing, and a female thing is more uh, mathematics, uh, abstract thinking, poetry, beauty. There is a and this will connect me with the next issue that is uh, how we think about beauty in physics. But yeah, okay, so there are places in the world in which uh, um, if you are a woman, you are supposed to be better at mathematics than something else. But there are also places in the world, and so I suspect Spain could be one of these places. So for sure, Italy is one of those places in which uh, uh, more women go into uh, more uh, practical uh, kind of uh, research uh, working in the lab because they are told that uh, abstract thinking, uh, mathematical thinking, theoretical thinking is not for them. So, and uh, this is for me one of the best way uh, to display how all these things are not related to how women are, but it's related about the expectations that society have towards us. Um, regarding the, so I, uh, this idea that women can be uh, more apt to a, 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 a more theoretical uh, or more um, 
practical kind of science uh, is also uh, oblige us to talk about this idea that there are uh, fields of research that are more pure or less pure. Uh, and uh, this is, of course, something we see uh, between uh, physics and other fields. Uh, but it's also something that we see, uh, I think, uh, you may have experience uh, of this uh, within physics uh, itself, uh, between uh, different uh, subfields. Um, for instance, uh, uh, I remember when I, oops, oh, so bad, I cannot show you. Oh, this doesn't display properly. That's so bad. Uh, well, you cannot see the, the full picture in which um, there was uh, a, <laughs> a mathematician there. Okay. Uh, but um, yeah, I was saying uh, that uh, um, we have uh, this uh, discourse within uh, physics about uh, uh, purity, about beauty. And uh, um, I would say, uh, um, I remember when I was uh, a student, uh, uh, there was uh, a joke about the fact that uh, people doing material science in my physics department were in the basement. All the theoreticians were in the last uh, uh, upper floor. Uh, it was like a display of uh, this thing that uh, uh, we have uh, different uh, we have this uh, idea that uh, the more you do uh, theoretical things, the more you go towards uh, the heaven and the pure things. And uh, this is a conversation that uh, sometimes uh, take uh, uh, use uh, the words of God and brings in uh, a religion into this. Uh, and I, this is uh, something I. I saw yesterday on Twitter, a physicist a colleague uh, asking why so many physicists, even uh, atheist physicists, they keep on talking about the mind of God, the God particle, the God equation, and so on. And uh, uh, Anna Watts, that is a very witty colleague, uh, said, uh, I think it's a male physicist thing. Uh, delusions of grandeur and all that. Um, Q example, uh, um, Q multiple examples of female physicists doing the same. And uh, indeed, I would argue that uh, this uh, um, uh, talking about uh, God and purity and uh, beauty is really something uh, that uh, has been uh, criticized uh, by uh, feminist uh, uh, thinkers. Uh, um, and in general, talking about science, but in particular, uh, talking about phys physics. So uh, where does this come from? It comes from the fact that uh, all our uh, um, uh, science uh, come in, in the Western tradition, uh, and also, uh, to live, uh, also in the, the Arabic tradition, in other traditions, um, is built uh, on uh, a history in which uh, uh, the institutions of knowledge have been created on the basis of other institutions that were religious institutions and also military institutions. Remember the fact that uh, uh, Galileo Galilei, that is sometimes uh, held as uh, one of the father of modern uh, physics, modern science, uh, couldn't marry he had uh, a partner, a Venetian woman, uh, he had uh, two daughters uh, and a son, I think, uh, but he could never marry because at the time it was not allowed for professors uh, to be married because being a professor was considered at the same uh, uh, foot as being a priest. And uh, it's not until uh, uh, very, uh, so, it's, it's, so it's something quite recent that in the uh, British colleges, uh, um, professors were allowed to, to bring a family, uh, to have a family, to combine their profession with having a family. So there is certainly this uh, connection between uh, uh, the way in which we think about uh, physics uh, and uh, the way, so this historical development from um, religious institution and, 
And uh, there is this, I wanted to recommend this beautiful uh, book that is now some 20 years old, but I think it's uh, always quite, uh, quite uh, illuminating. Um, I like this book because it's uh, specific. So while there are other books that discuss um, the development of science and the, the relation with religion, this is specific uh, center on, on physics discussing exactly what I was telling you before, uh, how um, um, the current uh, institutions in which we do science, our research centers, our university were modeled on the basis of monasteries uh, and uh, some of the difficulties that uh, women are still facing in uh, uh, doing science uh, are somehow inherited from this. So because we talk about uh, uh, religious institution and monasteries, I would like also to, to mention something. That is the fact that uh, uh, the relation between uh, science and, and religion institutions is not so, always what you think, because uh, in the Middle Ages, um, uh, the monasteries were also places in which uh, uh, women could uh, um, get power and get knowledge. Uh, there were uh, People that sometimes we remember as saints, but in fact, they were great scholars. So what we would call in, in the modern language a scientist, I think, for instance, uh, at uh, Hildegard, Hildegard von Bingen. Uh, and uh, so remember monasteries at the time were the places uh, in which uh, all the knowledge were uh, um, uh, distributed. Uh, they were the places in which books were arriving and were copied and um, it was recently uh, studied how so many uh, nuns in these uh, uh, monasteries contributed to uh, copying a manuscript. And again, a copying a manuscript at the time it was not just a, a, a sterile act of copying. Very often people were adding their own comments. So people who were copying manuscripts were really the scholars uh, at the time. Uh, so in the monasteries, uh, there was a lot of knowledge that was developed, not just uh, copy manuscripts, uh, there was uh, the development of medicines, uh, the development of botanics, so looking for uh, uh, plants that could have uh, curative um, properties. So this was a kind of work that now we associate with doing science. And uh, this brings to an important point uh, that uh, what does it, what do we mean uh, for doing science and what are the characteristics uh, that a scientist uh, should have to do good science. Um, for instance, uh, if you do experimental work, you know how patience is so important for what you do. So, uh, so is patience a male or female quality? Is patience a, a quality that you would associate with a scientist? Yes or no? Well, I mean, I, I would say if you look at uh, your daily work, if you are an experimental physicist, you would certainly uh, answer yes uh, for the positive. And um, I like to remember uh, um, an example of uh, uh, that connects with what uh, I was saying before uh, regarding the participation of uh, nuns <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to science in uh, the end of uh, the 19th century. So that was the moment in which uh, uh, humanity started to map the skies. They were uh, uh, an enormous number, thousands and, um, and thousands of uh, astronomical plates, uh, the first uh, uh, photographs of, uh, of the sky, and they needed to be cataloged. And a lot of this work was done by nuns. <laughs> in particular, in this picture, you can see uh, the uh, nuns that were working uh, in, uh, sorry, here, you can see the, the nuns that were working uh, in, uh, in the Vatican Observatory. And it was only a couple of years ago that we discovered their, their names. So before they were completely uh, erased from the history, uh, they were just considered a sort of uh, computers, some of accessory, not uh, uh, being part of the scientific uh, uh, discovery process. 
this is a lesson also for today. So now we are changing the way in which we see this. I think, for instance, uh, when we include the, the people who develop uh, uh, the codes for our simulation in uh, our um, uh, as contributors to uh, our papers and so on. So, I mean, we, we, we give full respect uh, to this kind of contributions. But this is uh, an evolution that happened relatively recently. Um, I mean, if you have seen uh, a film like Hidden Figures, you saw uh, people that were treated, as I say, like uh, um, human computers and um, and were not recognized uh, at the time as uh, part uh, of uh, an a pivotal part of the uh, scientific discovery. So here in this picture, uh, beside, so here you have the, uh, the Italian nuns uh, that uh, um, made the catalogs of thousands of stars uh, um, defining their position and their brightness. And the same work was uh, done in the United States uh, here with uh, um, what was called the Pickering Harem. It was the first time in which women were uh, um, uh, hired in an observatory, even though it took time for them, uh, for their work to be recognized. As I said, uh, Part of the feminist discussion is about uh, the understanding of what counts as science. So I think, for instance, also at uh, um, like the interplay between uh, Maxwell and uh, and Faraday. So Maxwell did the equation. Faraday did all the experiments. I think that uh, we still. Uh, uh, Till very recently, we were holding more dear Maxwell, who systemized the equation and forgot about, uh, forgot a bit about all the work, um, all the experimental work by uh, by Faraday. And uh, notice that this is often uh, w doing uh, practical work uh, has been often uh, the door for uh, people um, in. Um, uh, that were uh, um, not uh, uh, traditionally included in the scientific circles to enter and uh, starting working in the field. This was also true, for instance, uh, in anatomy. There were, um, in, um, in the 17th century, so there were uh, uh, fantastic uh, anatomists. There were women that were making models uh, using books uh, of uh, the human bodies. And uh, this was the way in which uh, they became some of the best anatomists of their time. Also, uh, I think about the work of Sibylla Merian that was considered an illustrator. But in fact, uh, her work in botanics, uh, it's uh, astonishing. So, and, and, and in, um, in physics too, in, in astronomy in particular, there was uh, all the work of these women that uh, uh, were uh, uh, working as clerk uh, somehow at the beginning uh, in the observatories, uh, but slowly they became uh, um, the main investigator <laughs> for that, those particular uh, endeavors. So defining what it means to do science, what is central in doing science, and including more diverse figures, including in particular do people that do the field work, the practical work, and people who participate with, not just with their abstract in the intellect, but with their full bodies is, um, is part of this. Uh, of this uh, feminist reflection. And I think you can appreciate how this is important in, in physics. Um, there are a number of uh, um, reflections uh, on uh, science from the feminist pers perspective uh, that, are, uh, uh, that we can uh, also apply to physics and that has been discussed in particular by feminist scholars regarding physics. I was uh, already mentioning the fact that uh, physics uh, has uh, a, a prestige, uh, um, somehow a prestige uh, uh, position with respect to the other sciences. It's uh, uh, something that it can be questioned and so on, but this is a kind of discourse uh, that uh, you have certainly met. And uh, it's uh, also 
here uh, philosophers of science are not innocent because uh, physics has been used uh, very often as the model for uh, uh, for the sciences for how scientific methods uh, work so but this uh, prestige that uh, physics has uh, somehow also makes more difficult, as we said before, uh, for women to enter with respect to entering in other fields that are hold as lesser. Um, I remember the fact that uh, um, physics, as other sciences, uh, was born in institutions that were modeled on the basis of, uh, um, uh, of religious institution. And uh, together with the religion, we, we, do so, we should also remember that very often, especially in the recent past, uh, physics has been uh, tied to uh, military developments. So this is also an aspect that uh, hold a woman uh, distance. Uh, then there is something uh, uh, that has to do more with uh, um, the perception that we have about physics. Uh, as uh, because of the fact that it's the prototypical uh, uh, science uh, somehow the model for the other sciences uh, this is also because it's considered one uh, of the sciences in which uh, you can achieve uh, value neutrality so thinking that values uh, don't play a role uh, in uh, what you do is something that, as it's written, it insulates uh, the field from the gender critique. And uh, okay, in, in, in doing this, there is, of course, also a, an arrogant attitude as has been uh, emphasized by, uh, by some scholars uh, that it, we cannot deny that it's present in our field of uh, research. And uh, this arrogance uh, is also present uh, in uh, some way in which uh, we teach physics. And uh, Karen, Karen Barad in particular made this uh, critique of uh, the recent way, the re recent wave that started uh, with uh, the beloved uh, Richard Feynman that was kind of uh, infant terrible. And there was this idea that uh, uh, spread among the students and among researchers that uh, uh, you can do physics and it's just fun. And you can do it without uh, being uh, uh, with some kind of lightness and uh, irresponsibility. And also a kind of, but the kind of irres irresponsibility that Karen Barad talked about is also an irresponsibility uh, with respect to meaning and understanding. That was the period of the shut up and calculate that was instrumental um, also to the developments uh, of uh, the uh, military application of, uh, of physics. And uh, you can see as uh, a feminist uh, stands uh, to try to bring back uh, mini understanding uh, to physics. So bringing more philosophy of physics uh, to the teaching uh, of physics itself. Uh, something that I want, let me give you some in an anecdote here because uh, I have met myself this kind of uh, how this bad stereotype of the scientist. So we, we passed from the stereotype of the scientist that is like a monk, the physicist that is like a monk uh, that cannot have a family, cannot, uh, it's uh, like a, a old wise. Uh, uh, white men from the stereotype that the physicist is just uh, a womanizer having fun playing bongos and so on and i have and and it's a genius of course and it's a genius that uh, doesn't have to do hard work because everything is just a game just a play i have seen this uh, uh, played from some colleagues of mine that uh, uh, tried to portray themselves in this way like, uh, for instance, uh, hiding the fact that they were spending uh, days and nights doing calculations, uh, but when they were coming to conferences uh, and showing themselves in a social uh, environment, uh, saying, oh, yes, it was easy. Uh, it's, I'm just a genius. 
<laughs> or or also trying to portray themselves uh, as a womanizer a la Feynman and uh, at conferences proposing to go to um, uh, how to say some uh, sexy bars and so on. So I, I mean, this is not something uh, I, 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 I talk about because uh, it's uh, an abstract critique to the poor Feynman. It's something uh, that I have seen in my experience uh, how uh, this uh, uh, has a consequence for the way in which my colleagues behave and also for the way in which uh, this kind of behaviors uh, is not welcome in uh, for women. Women that are often associated not to uh, be whole, uh, held like as genius, but rather as hardworking. And, uh, and also um, uh, here we can talk about the female qualities, if you want, uh, of uh, uh, what Karen Barad talk about uh, uh, as uh, bringing meaning and understanding and not just doing calculation and shut up. Okay, so, okay, so more, uh, so sorry, more about Karen Barad, uh, uh, what she said, because she, she called about, uh, so uh, Feynman uh, um, coined this uh, war, uh, word of uh, uh, physics is fun, spelled in this way, P-H-U, UN. So what she says is that physics is not immune to feminist analysis simply because electrons are not obviously gendered. The issues at stake are subtle, yet far-reaching. With a sense of human agency incorporated into scientific theories, perhaps physicists will no longer find it necessary to speak of elementary particles having attributes such as charm, beauty, strangeness, or give seminars with the topless naked bottom and exotic hermaphrodite states in the titles. Yes, this happened. Of course, feminist scientists realized that the suggestion of human characteristics is seen as playful, a humorous, innocent distraction from the serious concerns about the nature of the universe. After all, boys just want to have fun. <laughs> so, this is uh, uh, from a paper of Karen Barad from uh, 95 uh, that I certainly recommend to you. Okay, uh, so going back, uh, uh, so what about uh, changing, uh, uh, changing science itself? Um, here, I quote Schibinger, feminists have tended to make a distinction between getting women into science and changing knowledge. This is where we started with our conversation. Both are institutional and intellectual problems. And some initiatives should be collaborative efforts, joining the expertise of scientists and humanists. And here I praise uh, this uh, series of uh, uh, seminars that you are doing, because I know that uh, they are usually um, uh, with speakers uh, coming from uh, psychology, sociology, and other fields. And uh, I really think that one of the problems that we have been facing, uh, despite uh, the goodwill of some people in our institutions to make progress for women in physics and women in science in general, is exactly the fact that because we are physicists, sometimes we think we can do everything. And, but sciences like uh, uh, psychology and sociology and so on, they have uh, their own knowledge and their own techniques. And I think that it's important to have respect of this knowledge. It's important to take full advantage of this knowledge, collaborating and uh, um, doing things together. So, okay. Um, uh, and again, I want to stress the fact uh, that uh, uh, bringing more women into physics is not enough uh, uh, to uh, have uh, a feminist physics. So um, in other sciences in which uh, um, there was a completely uh, ov um, oversight of uh, women issue, for instance, I think of um, medicine in which uh, uh, women health problems were completely as I said, oversight, 
uh, by uh, male physicians. Uh, so of course, there, um, at a certain point, uh, people start raising questions about uh, um, um, female disease and the female body. But so talking about this is not enough <laughs> to be a feminist. So of course, you do a better science if you include uh, uh, this kind of investigation in uh, your in your field of investigation, but this is not enough uh, to do um, a feminist science. Uh, and again, uh, the point is that uh, the uh, the idea is that doing a feminist science will will really help us uh, to do a better science. Uh, some and here that's why I wanted to also quote Schibinger, a word of caution. It is an interesting phenomenon that when feminist insights uh, become mainstreamed in a science, uh, they are sometimes thought of simply as good science. And perhaps uh, they simply are. This uh, has the effect, however, of keeping things labeled uh, feminist uh, always on the radical fringe. So this is my talk is also an invitation to recognize uh, when uh, some progresses are done because of a feminist critique. And uh, we wanted to talk about this in science, uh, in, in physics, uh, but this is also something that happened in, in the philosophy of, uh, of, uh, of science and the philosophy of physics. So there were feminist scholars uh, uh, that first questioned the objectivity of science, a question later appropriated by mainstream historians of science. So feminist science studies impacted the field of science studies at the inception of the field in the late 70s. And this led to a decrease in obviously feminist science scholarship in the main journals related to this field. So there is a kind of normalization of the instances brought up by feminist scholars that gets uh, um, just uh, 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 included in what good science is. Again, I, I want to, um, to encourage people instead uh, to recognize uh, when uh, a positive change comes from uh, the activism of feminist scholars. Of course, uh, in every case, the, 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 the developments of feminist epistemologies, uh, uh, the feminist uh, reflection of uh, how we build uh, our scientific knowledge was also uh, influenced by um, uh, what happened in the in the 70s uh, with uh, thinkers like uh, Kuhn, Lactos, uh, Laudan, and uh, the idea uh, that uh, science should be contextualized. What does it mean that uh, when we discuss uh, how a scientific theory is uh, developed, uh, we should not forget uh, where uh, uh, the theory comes from, uh, where uh, uh, where uh, the, 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 the social context in which it was developed. Um, so an import, I'm coming to the end of my talk, uh, and uh, I wanted to make the, the most important point and now connecting uh, with, uh, with physics. So there has been in the philosophy uh, of science, in the feminist philosophy of science, a discussion about the notion of objectivity and uh, contrasting the traditional view from nowhere that uh, scientists try to achieve to be objective uh, with uh, the idea of a standpoint and the idea that uh, knowledge is situated. Uh, what is important here is the fact that uh, recognizing to have a perspective can be made compatible uh, with objectivity. So, and in particular, the multiplicity of perspectives can be combined to make objectivity even stronger. This is something that was very radical and was denied previously uh, and by um, philosophers of science. And I think that uh, in physics today, uh, of course, this is uh, this, the, the, these uh, ideas were influential in philosophy of physics and philosophy of science, but they have not percolated to uh, 
uh, the way in which uh, uh, we do science and we do physics. Why? Because of the attitude I was uh, talking about before, being dismissive about uh, the reflection about what we do when we do physics. The idea that we shall have to calculate and we learn about quantum mechanics, we learn about other stuff, but we don't let the student discuss the meaning of what they are doing. So, uh, in uh, current uh, uh, physics, uh, we see very often uh, even very prominent scientists uh, being dismissive uh, of philosophy of, uh, of physics. And in fact, what they do is just uh, whether they are just uh, unaware, <laughs> they are just uh, uh, in the dark of what philosophy of physics is about, but also sometimes they just hold uh, uh, bad philosophies uh, or uh, outdated philosophies. So here it's uh, my, my encouragement of looking into this, in particular looking into uh, the novelty brought by feminist thinkers. Uh, for me, this has been very important for the way in which I do physics. I wanted to conclude with this, give you, giving to you an example. Well, uh, this uh, feminist thinking we know have changed uh, other sciences. Uh, in primatology, in archaeology, in biology, the, uh, enter, the, the, the feminist thought on the discipline have changed the, the face of the discipline itself. And the new, discover, uh, new discoveries, uh, uh, discoveries have been uh, opened up for humanity. So the question is, is this possible to be done also in physics? And my answer is uh, uh, yes, I think so. And uh, I was, I promised to you uh, to have uh, uh, a discussion about uh, what does it mean to do, do science from a feminist perspective. Uh, here I have uh, uh, listed some of uh, the um, qualities that have been discussed by scholars. But let me use this uh, list because it's an interesting list from the 80s uh, that compare what a feminist science uh, uh, should be and uh, uh, what physicists are doing. Acknowledging their values and beliefs, unfortunately, no. And I think in particular of beliefs, for instance, about beauty. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, sometimes uh, you hear scientists uh, saying that uh, they trust their equations, uh, they trust their particular direction of research because of things like beauty. So beauty is certainly something that you would consider a value unless it's better defined. And uh, I like to highlight, for instance, uh, this work, uh, this book by Sabine Rosenfelder in which uh, she discuss uh, uh, how beauty uh, led physicists uh, astray. And coming back to this, uh, uh, so ooh, coming back to this, uh, um, um, there is also uh, the question of uh, whether uh, uh, physicists uh, are uh, honest about uh, assumption methods. Here, uh, Blader says yes. Um, are responsible with language? The answer is yes, as long as you think of the language of math. But uh, if you think of the language as being in terms of metaphor, well, metaphors are something in which uh, physicists have not been always uh, responsible. I'm very sorry for, I have my cat here and uh, I will take care of her soon. Um, let me, I hope I will be able to finish, <laughs> sorry. Um, um, so the aim, uh, so, and to conclude, uh, the, um, one of the question is eliminating research leading to uh, exploitation of nature. Unfortunately, I don't think there is a conversation about this, a sufficient conversation about this among physicists. This is what was said in the 80s and, uh, and, it's not, and it's still not done. Aiming for diversity, aiming for diversity yes. Recognizing the complexity of, of nature, yes. Resisting single cause explanation, the answer is not. 
uh, yeah, I, so I wanted to conclude uh, uh, with uh, a specific example in which uh, the new philosophy of, uh, um, of uh, physics uh, that, is, uh, um, that is born from uh, the uh, feminist reflection can contribute, uh, uh, is contributing in my opinion uh, to uh, the current development of physics. Karen Barad uh, discussed some 10 years ago how an interpret a, 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 a in depth interpretation of quantum mechanics uh, um, close to the original Bohr one can be thought as a, a feminist one. And uh, it was also highlighted how other interpretations, uh, such as the relational one uh, on which I work myself, can be thought as a as a feminist interpretation. Why? Well, because they put at the centers uh, um, these uh, relational aspects uh, and um, they put at the center the role of uh, the uh, observer. Uh, let me just give you a, a very short primer. Um, I just wanted to highlight uh, the fact that uh, in uh, this kind of interpretation, uh, there is a plurality of point of view. And so um, different observers give, may give different accounts of physical measurements. So one of the issues that has been discussed regarding the interpretation of quantum mechanics is how to uh, combine, uh, how to make sense of this fact without uh, uh, being lost in a complete solipsism. And uh, the answer, in my opinion, comes exactly from uh, the feminist uh, uh, philosophy of physics, uh, the feminist philosophy of science, uh, this notion of objectivity that allows for different perspectives uh, to be different, but at the same time to contribute together to create uh, a better objectivity. Uh, and what is, oh, well, I, I cannot resist to say a word uh, regarding the fact that this is not something that is true just for quantum mechanics. Uh, this kind of interpretation allows to make sense in a coherent manner also of uh, the relationality that appears in uh, all over in the way in which uh, we think of physics uh, from the uh, a relativity a la Galileo to the relativity a la Einstein till to the relativity to the kind of relationality that appears in quantum field theory. Uh, this would take an entire talk to discuss, but I wanted to convey the idea that uh, this relationality, this uh, the importance to include the observer in uh, the description of reality, it's something that permeates uh, all contemporary physics. Uh, and, uh, uh, and it's uh, essential to be acknowledged in order to have uh, a better understanding uh, and move forward in physics today. Uh, so to conclude, uh, we often discuss about equity. I really think that uh, discussing about uh, uh, women in physics uh, should all also lead us to do better uh, physics uh, and allows us uh, to go forward uh, with uh, uh, the development of physics. Um, I want to uh, conclude uh, with uh, uh, this uh, uh, landscape <laughs> of, uh, of books that uh, I, I recommend to you uh, if you want to dig further on this topic. So first of all, um, the book by Bar Margaret Wertheim that I have uh, mentioned at the beginning, but also this recent book by another physicist, uh, Chanda Presko Weinstein, um, that is uh, appearing now, that uh, is uh, about her journey as women, but also as a queer person, as a person of color in physics. So I like this, those, uh, those two books because they're two books that uh, talk about feminism and talk about being a woman in, in physics. 
if you are curious more about the development of uh, um, feminist philosophy, uh, well, a book that I can recommend is uh, uh, this one. This is not about, uh, this is in general about how feminism has contributed to change uh, science. It's not specific about uh, um, physics, but it's uh, a fantastic starting point. And uh, if you want more about uh, um, hardcore philosophy of science, I can recommend this primer by uh, Elizabeth Potter. And uh, to conclude, of course, uh, um, there is uh, uh, Karen Barad. So Karen Barad uh, was trained as a physicist uh, and uh, worked on the interpretation of quantum mechanics, uh, but then her contributions uh, were in philosophy and in particular uh, trying to bring uh, the novelty of contemporary physics and in particular to quantum physics uh, to the discussion in philosophy about uh, materialism. So she has this uh, philosophical theory about uh, um, um, uh, uh, agency that is uh, uh, discussed uh, among the philosophers and uh, is, uh, oops, and, um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, and it, it shows how physics can have a dialogue, a very productive dialogue uh, with, uh, uh, with philosophy. And here I conclude. Thank, thank you very much. No, you can attend your cats if you want, so, Francesca. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow, it was amazing, the, the talk, really. I think that this, this, this talk must be uh, in all the degrees of physics, <laughs> because we, we need to study philosophy really it's 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 amazing the the the, the all the your knowledge congratulations thank you very much is there any intervention or is there any the audience you want to ask francesca something you can just raise your hand Is there any, or in the chat? Wow. Well, I, I would like to ask you some something because you, you say that you teach this woman in science uh, course. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, I can talk, uh, I can certainly talk about this. Uh, um, this has been a very nice experience for me yeah. uh, because uh, um, I have been uh, teaching this class to a very wide audience of people um, being uh, philosophers. So these are students in uh, philosophy, but uh -huh. half of the class were students in science. So it was a very nice mixture. And uh, the idea, in fact, of this course is really to endow uh, the new generation of students uh, uh, to the instruments uh, of feminist philosophy. Uh, but to, to do so, we started with uh, the history of women in science uh, and uh, talking about uh, um, the uh, the data, of course, you need first to know the data, know the basics, in order then to understand uh, why then uh, there was a critique uh, by uh, feminist scholars. So we started with that, and then we developed later um, a more uh, uh, philosophical uh, discussion, and it was a really nice experience. And uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I, hope, uh, I, I had a positive uh, positive feedback also from the students. Ah, this is yeah, this is great. We have no this kind of course, at least as I as far as I know. And another another question regarding your your own experience, because you have living in you you are Italian, you are living in Italy, of course, in France, in Spain, in Netherlands, now in Canada. How do you feel this friendly environment in physics in all these uh, countries? How is your 
Well, uh, more, uh, uh, my biggest shock was probably when I arrived in the Netherlands because uh, I had my own stereotypes about uh, the, uh, the Netherlands being a place in, in which uh, women were more emancipated than in the Mediterranean uh, countries like uh, Spain and uh, Italy. And in fact, my experience was the opposite. For instance, uh, maybe, maybe for this audience, I don't know, uh, but I was shocked that uh, all the Dutch women were keeping uh, the uh, last name of their husband. <laughs> I had I made some gaff about this, <laughs> uh, but but also I was very surprised that uh, there are not so many women uh, in the departments, uh, in the and in particular in the physics department, in the mathematics departments. I was in a department of uh, sixty persons in mathematics, and I was the only woman beside the secretaries, and it was quite a shocking experience because, I mean, I came from Italy where uh, uh, students in, in physics are like uh, thirty or even forty percent in. Uh, physics. You know, in Italy, in uh, mathematics, 55% uh, of the students uh, are women. And uh, finding out that this was not the case in other countries. <laughs> so again, I think it's very important to compare what happens in, in different countries, because uh, you really realize how much these things are not related about uh, some intrinsic predisposition of women, but it's completely related to uh, the expectations of society. And again, I wanted to stress the fact that uh, it's not just about uh, whether uh, science, uh, uh, it's not just about how much uh, um, women are emancipated in a country, but it's also related to how much uh, a, a job is kept into esteem in that particular society. So I'm sure that in uh, Dutch society or uh, for this also in British uh, society or American society, science is kept in great esteem. And these are exactly the places in which I have seen less women. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna Manzanares in the chat, uh, she said uh, that it was an interesting talk. Thank you very much. And if you could recommend only one book for a physics student class, what would it be? Thank you, Anna. It's, uh, just one book uh, for a physics student class. Uh, uh, which level? <laughs> like uh, for a uh, university? Sí, well, 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 I think that it's... Well, Anna, 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 puedes hablar, Anna, si quieres, puedes preguntar. Uh, but maybe, maybe I think uh, I, I will go in this order. Uh, like in the books that are behind me, I will... Uh, suggest them exactly, exactly in this order. Uh, and the P Pythagora trousers is very good because it's uh, easy to read, uh, but uh, and it's specific about uh, physics. So I, I read it uh, when I was a first year of university <laughs> and it made an impression on me. <laughs> so, and, and then you, you may be stimulated to maybe learn more about the history of women in science and maybe also the philosophy, the feminist philosophy that goes with it. Okay, thank you. Also, Capitolina said, did affect your career in a negative or positive way, being a physicist to dedicate partially to academic feminism? So. Um, to tell the truth, this is a novelty for me. Uh, well, uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, well, this is not true because uh, as, I, as you said at the beginning of my presentation, I dedicated a lot of time as a student. If you want, I also lost the time <laughs> as a student uh, serving in the committee of my university for equity uh, and doing activities uh, uh, there, activities for women in science. Uh, um, so in this sense, you may say, yes, you lost time. But at the same time, I think I got my job here because I lost time uh, <laughs> when I was young. <laughs> and I, I really very am glad about the position that uh, I have here because it is uh, somehow realizing a dream and allowing me to be myself uh, completely. So uh, I was writing about, uh, um, in particular, uh, not just about uh, women in science, but about the philosophy of physics. Uh, and uh, this was maybe not count uh, um, 
in, uh, in my CV for uh, being hired in some positions, but at the same time, there is a serendipity such that uh, I got my position here and I am very happy with it. And I think it's in general a problem of women um, that they are more uh, uh, prone to interdisciplinarity. So this is, uh, in general, uh, I mean, exactly because very often women find their places uh, in where uh, there are spots that are left uh, open by more powerful uh, men <laughs> in their field of research. Uh, this is also, uh, so this allows them to do some innovative research, but then this is also uh, a struggle. Um, that I have experienced myself, but here not because of uh, uh, my work uh, on uh, women's science, more because uh, my very work uh, as a physicist is uh, interdisciplinary. So I work between uh, uh, gravitation and quantum theory. Uh, so I am uh, sometimes I'm labeled as a, a, a mathematical physicist, sometimes I'm labeled as a a, 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 even an astronomer <laughs> because I, I work with gravity and of course these kind of things can be played one way or the other uh, very often for women they are just played to exclude the women <laughs> from the position I mean uh, uh, this is also the case for instance of uh, some historical figures I think of uh, Vera Rubin who discovered dark matter I mean she worked on dark matter because uh, this was a uh, a subject on which she was allowed <laughs> to do her research uh, and there was no competition it was new so and and then uh, and then brought a great a great discovery so uh, so yes <laughs> I, I, i'm not saying that it's easy uh, uh, it's a struggle it's a struggle for all, all of us uh, but it's also the most rewarding thing if then everything goes well Thank you. Also, Kemli, just raise her, her hand. Hello. Thank you very much, Francisca, for, for this beautiful, beautiful uh, conference. I really like it. I, I really find uh, uh, finding very, very beautiful. I just have a, a question for you. I am very much more in the women and technology field, yes, and gender and feminist technology and all of that. But uh, I, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, as in technology, at the beginning, we were a lot of women working on that. Even not we were a lot of women, we were women working on that especially in the time you, you, you describe related with the observation, the collecting data, so all this part. And, but suddenly, yes, we were uh, no women and hidden women, yes? Yeah. Then wh what happened for you, which is your interpretation, when we disappear from, from the field? You mentioned the, um, the military institutions, yes? maybe as one of the reasons, maybe could be one of the reasons, but there are others that you can identify? Thank you. Uh, great question. And uh, you know what is the answer? Money, money, money. <laughs> um, when you, yeah, while, yeah, this, I suppose that this is the answer. While you were talking, it came to me a fantastic example of this. That is the history of women in information technology. So, you know, the first computers were completely operated by women. In the very early time of computer science, uh, women were uh, the majority of the students, basically, and the majority of uh, the researchers, the technicians. And again, there was this idea, I mean, computers were not uh, well known. They were considered like an extension of the typing machine. There was something, in fact, you know, coding is about language. So, and uh, women are thought to be good with languages. So, yeah, that's a perfect field for, for women. All the beginning of computer science uh, was completely dominated by figures of women. And then what happened was that a certain point in the 70s, in the 80s, um, computers started to be very lucrative. And being good with computers uh, was a door to uh, success, money, and so on. 
and suddenly you see a complete collapse of the number of women present in the field. Uh, it passed from a field being completely dominated by women and also with these fantastic women that were uh, pioneers, so they were uh, uh, revolutionary. And uh, then there was a new stereotype of the computer scientist being these uh, nerdy guys who assemble uh, computers in their garage and have no social life, uh, do nothing, <laughs> and so on. So uh, together, so in order to, to change uh, the democracy, the demo, uh, demography of the field, there was also this injection of a stereotype of what a computer scientist would have been. Uh, again, I, I, please take a look at the pictures of computer scientists from the 60s. They are these beautiful women, so creative. Uh, yeah, and again, I mean, my naive answer again is power, money. In the moment in which a, a job is a lucrative one, one that gives you either money or, or gives you prestige, it became a, a, a kind of job that is for men, men, not for women. Thank you so much, Francesca. Thank you, thank you. I see maybe Sonia has a question. Um, yes, um, thank you very much for, for your wonderful talk. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I was thinking a bit about, uh, for example, um, E.F. Keller, when, when she, she talks about how we become physicists and how we are like um, only included if we, uh, in a way, accept this um, culture of no culture. No, if you if we take all these values of physics onto ourselves, we get accepted in the field, and um, as women, and how this also creates like some kind of um, uh, I wouldn't say problem, but some instability, right? Like your identity as physicist, your identity as a woman, and and how you put the two together and so, and how this an, an opportunity also for changing things and a, a motor for change. And in this way, as she says that she had like many problems and um, she, she found some solace when she understood that it was political and not something that happened to her personally. So yes. um, I would like to ask you uh, whether it's also, I mean, part of this, uh, in your opinion of this, um, feminist epistemology um, getting political and getting together and getting a community of women physicists. Yes. Uh, um, as I said, uh, um, the awareness of uh, ourselves as being uh, a woman and uh, so being part of a community of uh, people who identify as women, but also being part uh, of uh, a scientific community. It's, uh, it's something very important. And uh, again, it's not just uh, by, by being an individual uh, uh, within uh, these communities that one gets the awareness of its position within it. And certainly what's the best way to get awareness than the confrontation, the discussion uh, with other people uh, being in the same position and discussing the same problems and, uh, and getting together. Um, so it's uh, in, in the process of getting together that uh, we don't get just the awareness of ourselves as an individual, but as a community with an identity. Uh, you said it, uh, <laughs> I cannot add anything. I think you said it already wonderfully, yes. And, and this is something very important uh, to, to, to create occasions uh, for, um, for people uh, to go through this, uh, um, to this uh, uh, path of growth. Uh, 
something that is uh, that has changed uh, with respect to when I was younger is uh, um, the fact that uh, I think that the internet helps uh, having the possibility to talk uh, with uh, uh, with Zoom like we are doing, but also. Um, if, if you have been following what happens with Twitter, there are a lot of people that felt isolated and found a community online. So we know about uh, all the, the bad things that comes together with the social medias, but um, social medias, in my opinion, are tools that we can use uh, for the good or for the bad, um, but we can use them also for the good, like uh, <laughs> Arab revolutions. And maybe we can also have a feminist, re a feminist revolution. I mean, the Me Too movement was very much developed uh, in online. And uh, for I'm certainly, and I think that there is also a space also for more reflection for uh, people who, identify themselves as a feminist and as physicist. I, I have a second question, if I may. And um, when, when you are a, a feminist in physics, you are like a strange person who's a feminist in, in physics. But when you are a, a physicist in feminism, you are also a strange person who's a physicist. And so um, you were talking a lot, a lot about Karen Barrett, and there's this, this um, this Karen Barat thought that, that reality is, is, is both um, material and discursive. And so we have been talking a lot about how it's discursive, but it's very difficult to get across the point that it's also material to um, a, a, a people in other fields who have been very strongly influenced by post-structuralism, for instance. So how do you deal with that? Well, uh, the point that you're raising uh, is, is something that uh, uh, people doing uh, uh, feminist uh, philosophy of sign uh, has been uh, uh, discussing uh, several times. Uh, also, there is a kind of a problem because if you're a philosopher, it's very difficult to, to keep up with the science. And if you are a scientist, it's also difficult to, to keep up with the philosophy in the sense that the kind of things that uh, I have been uh, bringing to you today are things that have been discussed uh, 40, 30, 20 years ago. And in the meanwhile, there, are, there is more discussion that has been uh, developed within uh, feminism or in general, I would say that now feminism is part of a larger movement uh, uh, for uh, uh, democratization, inclusion, uh, and so on. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem. And uh, I think that the solution to this kind of problem as always uh, when things get interdisciplinary is to work together. So uh, I, I cannot trust completely myself in my knowledge. Uh, I mean, I trust myself pretty much. I don't even trust myself in my knowledge of quantum gravity to tell the truth. I always need to collaborate with somebody else. <laughs> Maybe somebody who knows some mathematics better than me or somebody who knows, uh, I don't know, something else, some cosmology better than me. And I think that we, a lesson of, uh, uh, from feminism is about the power of collaboration and not to shy away from collaboration, not to shy away to ask help. Uh, and so I think we can do this also working together uh, with um, uh, physicists and philosophers. And uh, this is not uh, something uh, completely out of reality. I, so I work in this institute for uh, philosophy of science. And uh, well, I, I'm there myself coming from um, mainly a, a physics, a scientific background, but uh, many of my colleagues, uh, and in particular, many of the students that we arise as philosophers, find then positions in uh, uh, scientific institutions. Like I, I can think of a very bright uh, young scholar that graduated a, a year ago, and now she's doing a project uh, uh, supporting the scientists in uh, astrochemistry uh, to, um, yeah, for, for the research from a philosophical perspective. So in the same way, I think that uh, we can uh, bring in some uh, philosophers and possibly some feminist philosophers, feminist thinkers uh, to help us to develop uh, uh, the ideas that we have on this. 
Thank you very much, Sonia and Francesca. Uh, Carmen, Carmen, say something in the chat. Carmen, do you want to to say it, uh, or do you want that I read it, Carmen? I will. Carmen was saying that uh, the same happened, you know, with with women that we disap that computer we made a lot of uh, we, we wear a, a lot and then we disappear uh, she said that until sound arrived the percentage of women making films was similar to that of men and things change when the industry of cinema arrived and yeah with the sound yes this is another yeah. there are a lot of uh, hmm. and also francesca peiro and marta they are saying thank you very much for your talk and uh, yeah, really, we, we, we love uh, your, your talk. It was great. Uh, well, you know a lot of things in, in philosophy. A congratulation for your, all your trajectory. And uh, is there any comment? Uh, if not, we can just leave one hour and a half. It's just... Uh... Yeah, I'm sorry if uh, my talk was a bit longer than uh, what we discussed, but no, I hope... Well. Don't worry, it was great to, to hear you, really. Thank and you. you. gave a lot of homework because we have to read all these books, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't hesitate to write me if you want yes. more uh, advices about the things to read and so on. Uh, um, I... Yeah accumulated a long uh, reading list for my students in this class of women's science, so I can certainly give you some hints. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, so everybody's saying Ooh, thank somebody, you. Somebody's saying uh, thank you so much and send love to your cat. Okay, I have, oh, yes. to, make a, I have to make a disclosure. Uh, my cat has just delivered a baby while we, I was talking. <laughs> so. um, really? Yeah, and, uh, well, actually, I checked that she's doing fine, so I was happy to continue talking. Wow. Uh, now, now I'm going to take care of this. Yeah, please, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Gracias a todas. Nos vemos en el tercer webinar quedará eh, Capitolina, que está, está por aquí. Muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros y nosotras. Ok, bye, bye. Bye, bye Francesca. Gracias. Lina, ¿te ¿estás? Estoy, estoy, estoy. Aquí estoy, todavía tenemos tiempo.